Got a good one for you. So we have a 2014 Audi S5. It's got the supercharger, which is right here on it. And anything direct injected, especially European, uh, they have an issue with the intake valves building up a lot of carbon over time. This has 142,000 miles, give or take a thousand on that. And over time, what happens is the intake valve gets coated with carbon and it builds up on top of it and builds up and it restricts the amount of air it can get into the cylinder and it, their performance degrades, especially on a supercharged application. You're gonna notice it a lot. So what you do is you do an intake carbon cleaning on the valves and there's several ways that people do it. You can do it by chemical scrubbing it. You can do it by um, walnut blasting, shell blasting. And then um, we do dry ice because it's, to me, it's by far uh, the easiest way to do it because the walnut blasting, it makes a mess. It, it gets everywhere. It's a mess to put it in there. Um, the chemical is just dangerous. Uh, guys smelling the chemical. And it takes forever doing it that way. Uh, the dry ice, the only drawback in dry ice is our machine. We need a little smaller wand to get in there. Our, our little opening is a little too much, so the pressure is not as much, not as abrasive. Uh, that's where the walnut blasting with their setups, it's, they have more setups to do different applications over the dry ice. Uh, you just got to match up the uh, wand to it so you can get a little more pressure because pressure is key on the dry ice. Um, it does, I mean, they both, the media costs money with the walnut, but so does the dry ice, and you may not have a supplier, so you have to find out you have a supplier and it, ours takes a one eighth um, bead of dry ice. Uh, but it does take quite a bit of ice to get it clean. It, and depending how thick the carbon buildup is, it does take some time. Um, but on this application, you're right there on top of it. It did a pretty good job. I mean, another thing can help is if you, because it's good, it's hard to get on, on, on every angle without that little tube inside of it moving it, like on the um, walnut blasting. We're just kind of shooting it in like this because on the back side of that valve with that stem, you can't see it, it's hard to get there. So a little bit of chemical and some scrubbing does make a difference to try to make it look perfect. Um, but anytime you have an intake manifold off a direct injected engine, and you have, say above 70,000 miles, 60,000 miles, it's probably a good idea to look at the valves to service them. Um, it does make a, a pretty big difference if they're really bad. This one was pretty bad. I've seen a lot worse, but he'll notice a pretty big difference on power. I guarantee it right away, especially a supercharged application. Um, but as it, as time goes, that carbon buildup is going to start building up again. Um, the best thing you can do is top tier fuel. A lot of guys will suggest uh, to put an oil separator in there to help it out. Those help very minimal. It's just, it's the nature of the beast of this type of application. The vapors coming through the intake, going back to get burnt on a valve that's cold, turns to carbon. And you don't have any fuel on top of that intake valve spraying directly on it to wash off that, those vapors, which is, it's like an oil vapor, what it is, and it turns to carbon by a byproduct. Nothing's there to wash that valve off to keep it from building up carbon. And over time, it just builds up and stacks up and stacks up. And you have, then in the mornings, you, especially cold weather, a concern or a complaint I get all the time is it runs rough in the mornings and it kind of stables out. Low power is another one. Um, so if you have a direct injection engine, you have in the mornings at cold start, it's kind of rough. You're not consuming coolant and you're low on power. I bet your valve's got a bunch of carbon on there. But dry ice is another feature. A lot of guys don't do it. The machine is expensive and, and the dry ice can be pretty expensive if you don't have a supplier um, close by you. Uh, so that it's not for everyone. I'm not saying go get a dry ice machine and start blasting away. It, unless you have a, a need for it. On European cars, we do a lot of, you need to have that's either walnut blasting or a dry ice machine or something because you do so many of them that you really need something that's going to be uh, very efficient because the chemical and scrubbing is not a very efficient way to do the job. It, it takes hours upon hours to do it. And then the finished result's not very good. Um, I'll, I'll have Ashley throw up some before and after on this. It looks really good. When it came in here for the oil separator, it was bad on it. So and the gentleman elected, he, he was educated. He knew about the oil separator and he knew about the valve issue on these cars. 
So we got a brand new uh, oil separator here, separator on this thing. That's the oil separator. And we also change uh, this little piece right here. And there's an O-ring on here we change out. The breather tubes are usually cracked. We change that this time also. Um, we check all the connectors, make sure there's no broken connectors. Because um, usually people are in here and they break stuff. We'll put new injector seals on the injectors. And um, we clean up the valves. And we're going to put a belt on it. Um, I think that's about it on this ticket, uh, but it's going to run way better than it was. He'll be really happy. Oh, we did engine mounts. The engine mounts are bad. Very, very common on this engine, engine mounts. We did both sides. So he already, the owner already did the transmission mounts on this car. So, but yeah, wanted to bring in and, and also we'll clean these off too. They are IMRC plates. So they, they kind of slide in here and the intake and you have to make sure when you put these back together when you stack the lower uh, intake on it they have to be uh, in a position where they're not being held in place and, it, and you get a fault code. This is the right way it's installed. This, if you have it like this it's correct. See how it can move? What happens is when you put it together it gets caught behind it and this thing can't move. It's vacuum operated there. So see that? It wants to, put, it wants to suck it in but it can't. So if I do that, see it can work. That's how it's supposed to be in front. If it goes behind it, it'll get stuck. So all three have to be uh, in front of it. So can't go behind it. But that's what I was referring to on this. If you install it wrong, you get a fault code really fast. So uh, make sure there is a way you oriented those when you go back with the intakes that they're not stuck and jammed because that does happen if you don't know what you're looking for. So a tip for you. But that's it today. Hope you enjoyed it. Until the next one. See ya!